please welcome Jamie Williams, our first speaker for the first attack workshop in Africa and Middle East region. He's an advisory emulation engineer from attack team, and he will talk about updates from MITRE attack team. We will have uh, 15 minutes at the end of his talk for any questions. Mike was used. Great. Okay. Awesome. And thanks for having me and thanks everyone for joining. Um, we're always really excited to collaborate with the community. And I know this is the first meetup, but this seems like a really awesome group. So really happy to, you know, be honored to be here, but also really happy to meet um, everyone. Um, you know, as introduced, my name is Jamie Williams. Uh, I've been on the attack team for about uh, three or four years. Uh, if you're, if you've been following Attack, you know Attack has really grown in that time. Um, so I've been a part of a lot of uh, the shaping and development of the project. I am currently the lead of Enterprise. So um, if you're familiar with, and I'm, most of you, I'm assuming, are very familiar with Attack. Um, that is, you know, our biggest matrix. So I do a lot of the the shaping and you know development of techniques, but also a lot of the the other work and projects that go into you kind of, you know, the full content that goes into a technique. And I'll talk a lot about uh, a lot about that today, but, um, you know, as, as the host shared, uh, we will, you know, I'll, I'll talk for probably about 40 to 45 minutes, um, just giving you an update on, you know, you know, what's going on with attack, where we're going, uh, a lot of different topics here. So um, keep the questions, uh, you know, definitely uh, let me know. Uh, keep the questions uh, ready because at the end we can uh, go back and talk about anything uh, that I might have discussed um, as well as you know if there's any questions that you know just you know you might have about attack I'm more than happy to address those so any any and all questions are you know very very happily welcomed um, so without further ado let's let's dive in so you know attack is growing uh I'm, I'm always excited to see every time i make one of these slides i'm very excited to see how much the matrix has grown like this is just enterprise we're looking at and this is even without sub techniques um it's just awesome to see how much everything has grown and i definitely don't want to just take um you know we from the miter attack team perspective and miter perspective in general we really do want to extend the gratitude to the community you know you know individuals and groups such as yourself really are what enable attack to grow and keep you know uh, it really is a living framework and that's all because of you not only just um you know being users of attack uh you know providing feedback but also uh producing sharing and just building this culture of you know um sharing intelligence because that's really you know as we know attack is nothing without open source intelligence. We really do need those, you know, those insights from the community in order to kind of keep building, you know, new techniques, new ideas, um, you know, all the groups and software that we track, um, you know, since attack is really everything that's coming from public space, it really does take a community of practitioners um, to really keep the model um, on track and, you know, keep developing. So, you know, big, big thank you and uh, congratulations on, you know, attack is, you know, like I said, I've, I've been on the project for, for a while now, and it's, it's amazing to me every day to see, um, you know, I, I can think about the matrix and what it looked like years ago, and it's, it looked nothing like this. And there's so much more nuance and so much more power and where we are today. So a uh, big, big thank you. So just kind of at a high level, uh, where we are, um, you know, Attack 2021, we did our first release of the year in April. So that was release version nine. Uh, and we have our next release version 10 planned for October. We are right in the middle of those two releases. So this is a really good time for us to, you know, between releases, uh, we don't just, uh, you know, pretty much every day we're doing something, you know, we're either strategizing what, um, you know, new content should look like. We are building out, you know, new sub techniques, new techniques, new ideas, um, taking meetings and, you know, responding to emails from people in the community that are sharing uh, either intelligence or ideas. Um, it's pretty much just a constant churn. So, um, you know, we're pretty much, um, you know, very busy, but I uh, just wanted to kind of give you a timeline and kind of give you a picture of, you know, um, if you haven't been tracking 
um, October will be our next release. And we got some, some interesting things planned for that release that I'll walk through today. Um, so definitely if, if anything kind of catches your interest or you have any uh, feedback or anything about something that might be in progress or in development, um, you know, if I don't, if I touch on it, you know, by all means, um, you know, hopefully I address your questions, but if there is anything residual that, you know, you still have a lingering question about, by all means, feel free to ask at the end. I think that'd be a great discussion. Um, so just diving in, um, I'm going to touch on a bunch of topics that are kind of, um, you know, things that we've, you know, re recently released and things that we're working on now, just to give you a little insight to, you know, where attack go is going, uh, starting with attack for enterprise. So, you know, uh, attack for enterprise has gone through some, you know, pretty substantial changes in the last couple of releases, you know, uh, you know, version nine or version eight, sorry, we merged, we deprecated the pre-attack matrix and merged it into enterprise as the two tactics. It was reconnaissance and resource development. And then before that was even the more dramatic change with, you know, uh, between version six and version seven, we did the transition to sub techniques. Both of these were very substantial um, in our opinion. And we, we saw the impact of the community, especially with sub techniques. You know, the, a lot of the, the technique names and technique structures changing. Uh, so we do kind of, uh, we, we obviously we know that this was something that we had to do for the greater growth of attack. Um, but we do recognize that this was a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a dramatic change for especially people um, and users of attack that maybe have automated, um, you know, tools or, you know, a lot of integration with, you know, the way this attack was previously structured. So we do like to share the sentiment that, you know, we are going forward, trying to build more, we call it stability. So, you know, we did sub techniques, that's a one time thing. It's not something that, you know, we're not going to make sub sub techniques, uh, or at least we don't have any plans to do so. So I just wanted to, you know, assure the community that, you know, uh, these changes we are trying to, especially for uh, 2021, um, you know, remain more, more stable, more static, so that people can kind of, you know, settle into what attack the new attack, uh, as you know, as you can, you can maybe call it with the sub technique structure. But we have been, as you might have noticed, uh, expanding out a lot more of the enterprise platforms. So, you know, I'll dive into this a little bit later, but, you know, in recent releases, we did introduce a platform for network devices. We released, um, you know, a, another platform for containers. So, you know, there is growth, but we're trying to grow within the current structure of, you know, tactics, techniques, sub techniques and procedures, you know, what, what, so kind of just building that kind of schema and that blueprint for attack going forward. But that said, um, on the enterprise side, at least we do, um, it did take a lot of cycles and effort on our side to build out sub techniques. It was almost what we would call an all hands on deck effort. We had a lot of people um, really focused and committed to just building that structure. Um, so you know, during that time, we did build up a pretty um, a measurable uh, backlog of techniques and sub techniques that we needed to add, you know, new ideas, new concepts, or even just improvements where, um, you know, a, sub a, a concept or technique that we had in attack might have aged and might have needed a little touch up. So we, we've been tracking those things. If you submitted anything in that, um, in that time period, uh, we, we do have it. We didn't, we didn't lose any of those. So right now we do have a, a our team is focusing um, pretty uh, exhaustively on, you know, going through that backlog, figuring out, you know, new, new ideas that came out, uh, new techniques, things that we need to improve. We're, we're addressing those now. We did catch a couple of those. If you, um, if you recall, we did a spot release, you know, version 8.2, um, after the solar winds breach, there was a couple techniques that we thought were pretty critical that we released. Um, and we're hoping to do the same for, you know, especially the big dramatic techniques that we really do want to share with the community. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that in October with the release of version 10. Um, another interesting initiative within Enterprise is uh, we are doing a very direct and very explicit effort of improving our Mac OS and Linux content. Um, we realized that, you know, that space 
has not been updated and maintained at the same level of consistency as maybe our other platforms, especially since its initial release. Um, you know, I think that was back, you know, pretty early version of attack, maybe version three or maybe four, maybe before that. But one thing that is kind of a holding, holding us back, and we do want to extend this invitation to, to you and the rest of this community is um, getting threat intelligence about what happens in Linux and Mac OS uh, is also is often very difficult. Um, you know, it's not as heavily reported as something, you know, another platform like Windows. Uh, we don't just see just a constant stream of, um, you know, reports or just intelligence that really, you know, not just headlines, you know, as, as you know, we, we, we do like the headlines, we do like the high level um, statements and kind of, um, you know, big, big level, big picture summaries, but to really bake out and really, um, you know, understand and document the nuances of a technique, we do need a lot of very specific details because, you know, as you know, we try, you know, we don't try, we, from the attack perspective, we do not document new tradecraft. It has to be something that's already publicly known um, and publicly used operationally by an adversary. So we do scope and kind of limit ourselves to what is already, um, you know, in the operational space. So, you know, if you or anyone, if you have any, you know, insights about, you know, especially, um, you know, tradecraft and Linux and Mac OS, um, definitely, you know, please consider con uh, contributing that and sharing that with us. Um, I can talk about, you know, if you're not familiar with the contribution process, I can talk about that little, a little later as well as um, during the Q&A. But, you know, just to kind of give you a picture of, you know, our timeline, we did do um, some pretty substantial updates in the most recent release in April, uh, specifically targeting the Mac OS platform. So there was a couple techniques that went through um, a pretty um, sizable um, rewrite. So we have our, our new Mac OS lead, Cat Self, who led the initiative of talking to the community, figuring out what techniques were, we call them stale or maybe out of date, um, and drafting a lot of content, working with the community and kind of you know getting reviews and making sure that those techniques make sense. Um, as the slide says, about 50, we addressed about 50% of what we thought needed to be addressed. So um, the other, the back half of the rest of those updates will come in October with the version 10 release, but in parallel and at the same time, we are doing a similar effort for Linux. So, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, especially when you talk about like Linux versus Mac OS and, you know, the broader, maybe um, kind of the, the Venn diagram and other kind of relevant um, OS would be like just general Unix. Uh, we do have, you know, uh, sometimes we have to address like, you know, kind of the overlap and kind of the, the difference between those platforms. So it does um, get a little complicated at times, but we do see a lot of times, um, especially the, the things that are maybe more native to these OSs, um, we do see a lot of overlap there. So it does make sense to do these at the same time, but at the same time, we are trying to uh, maintain those clean borders and those clean uh, separations between what we call Mac OS and what we call Linux and maybe other conceptual ideas that are maybe just broader OSs, you know, thinking things like BSD or, um, you know, IoT that might not be, you know, fit exactly into those um, platform categories. But long story short, if you are interested in Mac OS and Linux, um, you know, this is a good time to, you know, share those, any, any ideas, especially things that you're seeing used by real adversaries in the wild, or if you don't have insights or anything that you can share, just keep an eye out, um, on what we're, you know, doing, especially with the most recent releases. And if you just see things that you think can be improved, um, you know, shoot us a message. Uh, we're ha very happy to take that feedback. Um, this is another big initiative that we're working on, and this is something that, um, I'm personally very involved with, so I'm very, um, you know, interested in this one is if you've noticed, uh, we have been updating our data sources. So historically, data sources were just strings, um, as you can see with the example on the right with the core profiler sub technique. Uh, we just listed, you know, things like file monitoring, process command line parameters, process monitoring, um, just kind of, you know, helpful, you know, it kind of, those are useful. 
but you know, there's no details. We just kind of give you a name. There's no descriptions. Um, and maybe the kind of the feedback that we got directly from the community, as well as just kind of watching um, the way people use those data sources, because there was a pretty substantial amount of, you know, GitHub repositories and other just, you know, frameworks for using attack data sources. The, the kind of the conclusion that we came to is that these, these values were insufficient. They weren't, you know, at the right level of depth to actually be useful. Um, so, you know, bigger picture for attack is we don't want this just to be a academic model or, you know, something that is, you know, kind of neat to look at, but not necessarily helpful. We do try to make this, uh, you know, attack as practical and pragmatic as possible. We want something that actually helps you with your security operations. So we, we recognize that data sources was something that we could, you know, do hopefully a lot of um, good for the community and updating. So if, you, if you've been following like, you know, our updates and our medium, you, you recognize that, you know, Jose Rodriguez uh, was helping us out and, you know, joined the attack team and has been really doing some awesome things. And, you know, the rest of the team has, you know, put in a lot of effort to uh, improve these data sources. So I'll walk you through um, what, the, what the kind of philosophy that we're going for and, you know, the plans going forward, because um, we did release the first half of this in version nine in April. And then, you know, the rest of it is coming in version 10 in October. Um, but long story short, the big problem that we recognize with data sources is, you know, as looking at that previous slide, you know, something like process monitoring, um, it's, it, you kind of conceptually, you might be able to understand what we're talking about there, but it's not something that, you know, as a practitioner, if you're a blue teamer or uh, in, in the defensive space, you know, what does that really mean? Like, you know, there might be various different ways that, you know, you actually monitor processes and there's, you know, a lot of different values that could be relevant there. So, you know, we kind of use this visualization to show the gap between, you know, what attack was talking about and you as a practitioner, what you actually might be looking at um, in your environment. So the big idea was that we needed to connect, you know, those two sides uh, of the spectrum. So what we did was built out this, uh, this model where, you know, on the attack side, we will tell, give you data sources as well as data components, which describe, you know, what type of information you, you need to, um, you know, collect. And then specifically within that type of information, you know, what specific, you know, elements or, you know, specific values are of interest. So for example, you know, we need to collect information about our process, um, but there's so much information about processes that may come from different places. So, you know, there may be creation of processes, modification of processes, or, you know, access or, you know, um, you know, processes touching each other. So what we kind of built was this model where we have data sources, which talk about, you know, the type of information components are, what about that information is relevant. And then, you know, through relationships, we can actually start to map to, you know, th those actual tangible defensive values. So in, in this case, I used uh, Sysmon and Windows event IDs, but that could be anything that could be, you know, if you have an EDR or you have, a, you know, a completely different, you know, data model or schema in your environment, uh, our hope is that these data sources and data components can help you translate whatever data you're collecting into the, the what we're trying to describe in attack. So this is just a notional model, but as you can see, like you could you can connect hopefully connect into this um, a lot easier than you know trying to map Sysmon one and Sysmon eight and Sysmon ten to process monitoring. Um, that might that was a little bit um, insufficient. So, like I said, um, as of attack version nine, we released the new um, data sources, data components uh, formats. So you can see the example on the right. Um, you know, we have things like you know command, command execution, and then you, and there you can see a good example of you know whatever that technique is. I believe it's something in discovery. I don't I don't have the ID memorized, but it's you know there's two types of process information that are relevant: the creation of processes and the execution of API calls from that process, and then the execution of scripts. Um, you know, those values, you can hopefully go through that same exercise of translating that to the data that you're actually collecting in your environment. So if you go to attack now, um, you'll see those values. Um, and it, it's just those static values in the on the website and in the sticks. 
Uh, we have not built out the full objects for data sources, but that is on our, our timeline. And what I mean by that, actually, I'll, I'll describe that now before I flip to the next slide. But um, our long-term plan is to build full objects of data sources similar to what we have in mitigations where you know you can if you go to the tax site and click on a mitigation uh there's a description there's you know a bunch of metadata you know based on that mitigation and you can actually see the mappings from that mitigation to you know techniques and sub techniques very similar to uh very comparable to like you know what you would think of in a group or a software page um so that's the long-term goal for um, data sources. Uh, we have not implemented that yet, but as I said, that is planned for version 10 in October. So um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, in the meantime, these data sources are being stored in GitHub. So if you, as you can see in the slide, um, those like the data source names like command, process, and script, those are links. They currently link to our GitHub where we have both a list of the data sources as well as the metadata that we will use to populate those data source objects. So here's a good example um, where we can look at the data source file, um, you know, going forward actually on, you know, in version 10 on the attack page, we'll have, you know, there'll be a page for the file data source that has a description of what that is. And we'll also provide some metadata on, you know, what is this data source? So, you know, where do you collect it? what platforms is it relevant to? So in this case, we're talking about, you know, files on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and network devices. Um, and then all of those components that I mentioned, you know, in this case, file has the, you can see an example, like it has, there's the content of the file, there's metadata about the file. Um, so every one of those components will be listed as well as a name uh, and a description. So you can kind of understand, you know, what that component is. Um, so this is something that we're actively developing. It's in GitHub, so you can see it and you can obviously, um, you know, start getting used to it, but you can also, um, if you're interested, make contributions, uh, provide feedback. If, um, you know, we're, we're obviously very happy to not only, you know, get new ideas, but um, just get feedback and, you know, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense, this could be more clear. Um, whatever it is that, you know, would help these ideas be more useful for you, uh, we definitely want to hear that. But like I said, um, the bigger plan is, you know, we're, GitHub is not the final home for data sources. Uh, we want that to be a part of the, the greater attack ecosystem. So it will be integrated into, you know, both the attack website and the attack sticks um, as of version 10. Uh, we have have been doing mock-ups on, you know, what the sticks will look like. And the current idea is, as you can see the diagram on the right. So previously data sources were just metadata embedded on a technique. So if you went to, you know, in, in the, the sticks world, if you just went to, you know, an attack pattern object, it just, one of the fields on that, you know, either uh, sticks or the JSON representation of it was, you know, the data sources that were relevant there. Going forward, both the data sources and the data components will be um, custom sticks objects. So they will be their own, um, you know, their own file with their own metadata, as I described, and we will build relationships between those objects. So, you know, a data sources, a data source has, uh, you know, an embedded relationship with these data components. So one data source can have multiple data components and those data components are what detect techniques. So, you know, file content is really what's going to detect, you know, a relevant technique or sub-technique. So if you're, if you're really into sticks, um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm willing to, obviously happy to ask or answer any questions and I can point you to some resources later that might help if you wanted to, um, you know, dig a little bit more into this, but long story short, um, you know, this change will come for enterprise in version 10 in October. Um, and the longer picture plan is, you know, this, even though we're just implementing this for enterprise initially, we will want this same idea to flow to the rest of attack over time. So when I say the rest of attack, I'm speaking of, you know, uh, attack for mobile as well as attack for ICS, because we do believe, and we have heard a lot of feedback that this, you know, this level of granularity of data sources and data components, not only uh, is a bigger improvement, 
it is a lot more consistent and hopefully a lot more actionable as we saw like it you know uh the biggest the biggest challenge sometimes with you know maintaining and developing attack is um how you know anytime we're talking it like a, a big picture um trying to keep that close to what you're actually doing day to day so if you're working in sysmon or windows event ids or whatever your favorite defensive tool is um obviously there's going to be a gap there because we can't just list you know everything in one schema because people use different things and we don't want to uh, we kind of want to stay universal so the whole community can use us but we think this this data source data component um structure is um you know it, it's it, we're building that bridge so that it, it's more useful more practical um, another really big change for us is, um, as you as, as you've seen uh, in version eight of attack, we released um, attack for the cloud matrices and attack. So you know, representing those on-prem or you know, cloud service provider hosted um, platforms. Um, up until version eight, we did have you know a breakout of platforms based on you know different cloud service providers, so Azure, AWS, uh, GCP as well as some other uh, SaaS related um, platforms like Office 365 and Azure AD. Uh, and then we had a general SaaS uh, platform that was just kind of the, you know, all other, you know, potential applications, thinking things like Box, things like that. Uh, a big change in version nine of Attack was merging these, uh, the, especially particularly the IaaS or the infrastructure based platforms merging those into just a general IaaS. So, you know, Azure, AWS, and GCP merged into one platform. Um, the reason behind this was, you know, being able to see the overlap between those um, platforms, but also being more broad, because, you know, some people, uh, a lot of these same techniques may apply to Alibaba and, you know, other Oracle, other cloud services. Um, so just being kind of matching the same level of granularity of the rest of enterprise, but also, you know, um, being more inclusive of different platforms or different uh, technologies. But we do have, we did retain, um, you know, some of the the SaaS um, platforms. So Office 365 and Azure AD still have their own platform, as well as we added the Google Workspace uh, platform. So I think um, that's, you know, kind of representing the same technology um, as like Office 365, but not from Microsoft. And, uh, you know, the, the same general overarching bucket of just general SaaS platform and going forward, the cloud team obviously is keeping an eye out for new platforms to add for this space, particularly um, SaaS. So if cloud is kind of where you uh, do, do majority of your work, we're obviously um, very excited about these changes, but also very receptive to feedback if things are you know, if you have ideas of new techniques or new platforms that could be relevant, uh, definitely worth having those conversations as well as um, if there's things that you see in terms of, you know, content, you know, detections, data sources, whatever you have, uh, we're very happy to receive um, that feedback. One final thing I wanted to say about cloud is um, because it is an enterprise, we did do um, the same data source modeling for cloud. So here's here's a good example of you know if you're if you do a lot of work in cloud, um, this is hopefully um, is pretty intuitive. But you know we did do a lot of the same data source data component structure for a lot of the cloud based data sources. So in this example, we're looking at instance. So um, the idea is you know very similar to what I showed mapping to like Sysmon and Windows Event IDs. A lot of the cloud data sources were more based on you know, specific events or API calls. So as you know, like, you know, most of these cloud you know, environments are, you know, a lot of API calls and a lot of, you know, services on the back end. So mapping, you know, data components based on, you know, those particular events and those calls. So, you know, in the case of an instance, we're talking about, you know, the creation of an instance, modification, deletion, metadata about it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we thought that, you know, we went back and forth and, you know, had a different, couple different ideas and prototypes for how you know the cloud specific data sources would look because um in reality uh we you know initial thought was a lot of cloud monitoring is very often just logs um so we thought it wouldn't be helpful just to share you know cloud logs like as a data source and just kind of use that all over the place rather that we wanted to really talk about you know what exactly are you looking for 
um, you know, in, re in regarding if you're looking at a log or another, um, you know, specific, you know, sensor, what type of data are you actually looking for in those, um, you know, in those sources? Uh, this is another really exciting one. Um, you know, I, everything's exciting to me, sorry, but this is a really big one that was uh, kind of fun to watch. So we reckon, and this is actually a really cool story. We recognize that a lot of people, um, you know, want more attack. They, you know, and rightfully so, um, you know, there's you no know, different technologies, different spaces that maybe we haven't addressed. Um, and this is a really cool one where Microsoft, you know, based on the data that they have, um, they built an, an attack-like matrix, threat matrix for Kubernetes, because they realized, you know, uh, we like the model and the structure of attack. Um, it's not something that we had built. So they built their threat matrix for Kubernetes, um, you know, playing along and very nicely with our trademark rules where basically just please don't call it attack. You're, you know, obviously free to use the tactic technique structure, build your own matrix, just please don't call it attack. Um, and then they did a really cool job building out this, you know, what they were kind of seeing in terms of, you know, what, what a threat matrix for Kubernetes and these like container technologies would look like. So, you know, we saw that and through our Center for Threat Informed Defense, um, they actually created a, uh, a project sponsored by, you know, Microsoft and other participants in order to actually, you know, prototype what an attack matrix in the space would look like. And it actually ended up being something that we did release in version nine. So um, the matrix is there on the right. Um, those links in the bottom kind of walk you through um, the story from both, you know, when we released it, as well as, you know, a, a more um, historical story from the Microsoft perspective. But as you can see, um, it really was a really, um, a really impactful uh, project in terms of we were able to take, you know, the threat intel from the various contributors. I think, you know, uh, Microsoft, McAfee come to mind. I think there was a couple others as well. Um, take their inputs and kind of work together to shape, um, you know, a new part of attack. So in this case, we added a platform for containers, which is, you know, indicative of both, you know, Docker, Kubernetes, as well as um, other related technologies. So a lot of it was, you know, merging, um, you know, behaviors that happen in container space with the existing techniques. Uh, so, you know, a lot of those you might recognize as techniques that had already existed, but there were, you know, a good amount of new ideas that, you know, didn't exist um, and our container specific, like, for example, you can see an execution, uh, container administration command, deploy container, things like that, that are very container specific. So it was really neat to, you know, merge um, all those ideas and able, you know, especially as more and more of the world moves towards, you know, this container and this automated uh, infrastructure space, uh, really was a neat project to, you know, uh, grow attack and kind of provide more um, content and more hopefully um, help to the community. Um, before, you know, th that was all enterprise. Um, and one thing I just wanted to touch on is, you know, regarding mobile and ICS, I don't have a lot of content here, but one thing that I wanted to share is very often when we talk about attack, at least when I do, um, as the lead of enterprise, I talk a lot about enterprise, but, you know, it is important to note that, you know, attack does include mobile attack and ICS attack, uh, those are very thriving communities. Um, and if you have, you know, any, any stories or any feedback uh, about, you know, things that we can improve in mobile or things we can improve in ICS or just usage, you know, we're very interested to hear how you're actually using those uh, matrices. But one thing I wanted to point out is we are making a lot of efforts to, um, you know, can make a lot of consistent improvements for consistency across these matrices. Um, so we realized like, you know, if you go between, you know, mobile enterprise and ICS, there's some, you know, some things are formatted differently. Um, they, they can matter look, they might look and feel a little different. So we are trying to make, you know, that transition between these different technology domains, um, a little bit more seamless. So, um, as well as, you know, lining up our release schedules. So, uh, you know, especially with every, a lot of things that I mentioned regarding, you know, uh, you know, tactic names, tactic scopes. Um, data sources, you know, what you kind of can expect when you look at a technique. Uh, we are doing a lot of work to, you know, make, make that more normalized and more uniform. So ICS specifically, 
they have um, aligned their sticks release with enterprise. So they're kind of on the same schedule and going forward in October, we are planning on doing and introducing, you know, cross domain groups. So thinking, you know, those groups are those threat actors that, you know, their campaigns span, not just the ICS realm, but it bounces, you know, potentially back and forth between the operational technology OT side and the IT side, um, which, you know, is very, very common and very uh, regular threat vector, you know, thinking most OT environments may be a little bit segmented from the public internet. So we are doing some work to kind of, um, you know, be able to paint that story between, you know, seeing how the matrices overlap. We actually released a blog last year that kind of has a really interesting take on, you know, how those matrices look side by side. And then same thing for mobile. Uh, I think uh, pretty much everything I said applies to mobile where we do see a lot of, you know, um, adversaries, you know, swimming between the two matrices where they get into a mobile device and use it to access to enterprise. Um, and a lot of the same techniques may overlap, especially with, you know, iOS and Mac OS being uh, potentially integrated. Um, and, you know, one, one big announcement for mobile is um, no set timeline on this, but we are working on uh, sub techniques for the mobile inter, um, matrix. So you can expect, you know, the same kind of change that we saw on enterprise with, you know, uh, adding that level, extra level of granularity to techniques. Um, keep out, if you haven't been using mobile, if you have been using mobile, uh, keep an eye out because um, that will come, uh, I, don't, I don't have an exact date, but um, that is on our uh, horizon. Um, uh, this is a big one for us. Uh, we did, as you probably saw, we did our attack con power hour in uh, 2020 in the early part of 2021 it was all virtual um we were planning on hopefully having an in-person attack con at the end of this year but unfortunately um due to you know the new new information and restrictions with travel we have decided to postpone attack con until next march uh particularly what we didn't want to exclude the international community from intending um, that didn't seem, um, you know, it didn't seem fair, didn't seem right to kind of, you know, just, you know, especially with travel restrictions and whatnot, we definitely wanted it to be kind of, you know, a, an event for everyone. Um, so we did decide to, to postpone to March. Um, no set timeline on when the call for papers will be announced, but definitely keep an eye out on our Twitter. We will obviously share that. And we're very excited to see, um, you know, uh, you know, submissions from everyone. Uh, I think, I don't, I don't know our statistics, but we do, um, it's, I, I, we, we really do accept talks from all over the world. So it's, it's fantastic to see, you know, different, different communities and, you know, how so many different ideas and so many different people are doing such amazing things with attack. Uh, but just a reminder, um, you can check out, you know, all of the previous attack going back to the very first one, uh, all the previous attack con, you know, slides and videos may be available at our site. So check out that. Um, there's so I, I to, even personally, I go back to that site all the time because there's just so much really good content. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> um, so, it, you know, I, I'll go and flip through a couple of slides based on what I'm working on. It'll really help me. And then, you know, when I can find some time, maybe watch a couple minutes of a video here and there. But, um, you know, it really is a great resource. So definitely just want to remind everyone that that's available. And, you know, don't uh, start thinking about if you want to submit, start thinking about your ideas, because uh, we really do love to, you know, attack on is really our chance to, you know, hear from you, but also uh, you to speak to the rest of the attack users of the world. So um, definitely keep, a, keep an eye out if, it's, you know, submitting and presenting is something that you're interested in. Uh, final thing I want to touch on, and I think uh, this community is well aware of this, but I just wanted to touch on it a bit was, you know, just a reminder that we did release our free attack training through uh, the MITRE Attack Defender program. So if you go to the, the, the MAD website, um, it'll link out to the three courses that we've pre I've already released. So Attack Fundamentals, the CTI course, and the SOC assessment course. All of those are hosted on Cybrary and should be accessible for free. If you're interested, there's a certification program where you can take an exam and they just announced digital badges. So you can get a digital badge for any of the exams that you pass. Uh, but you know, all this content is available. Um, so if you haven't already, um, 
taken a look, definitely check it out. There's some really great content. Um, you know, I think all in all, it's a little under about five hours worth of videos, um, some exercises, uh, really some really um, hands-on, um, interesting uh, experience working with attack. But also uh, just wanted to throw out a reminder and kind of um, put something on your radar that going forward, Mitre Attack Defender, uh, we do update these uh, courses. So I actually made a small update to uh, the fundamentals course based on what we released in version nine. Um, and we are developing new courses. So in the future, uh, the, the course list will expand. So just keep an eye out because there might be, um, you know, if, if you've done these three courses and you want more, uh, or if these three, you know, maybe aren't necessarily something that you want training on, uh, there is going to be more content on the horizon. Uh, and finally, I uh, just wanted to thank, you know, I don't know um, who all is here now or, you know, we'll see this, but just wanted to, you know, like I said, like I started with just big thanks to the community. Uh, we are, this is one of my favorite pages on the website is the, just the list of contributors who all sent things in, um, you know, that it's, it's just amazing to see how many people just take the time out of their day to help, you know, grow and improve attack. And, you know, this list, I, I, it can never be long enough to, in my opinion, I absolutely love it. And just wanted to thank you again for um, everything you do, whether you've contributed in the past or you, you're just an attack user, uh, you are contributing to, um, you know, attack. So, you know, even just being here today, um, you know, really, really helpful and really, really does, you know, it keeps us going. Um, so, you know, big thank you. And with that, that's everything I had. Um, thank you for your time. My, like I said, my name is Jamie Williams. Uh, there's my Twitter if you wanted to reach out directly, but our information on the bottom, uh, our email address, if you wanted to send a contribution in, as well as, as I said, uh, most of our announcements will come through Twitter. So definitely, if you haven't already followed the MITRE ATT&CK uh, page on Twitter, we also have a LinkedIn page. Those are going to be the best bets for staying up to date in terms of, you know, every day-to-day -day announcements from a